Welcome to the ADR video informational series. In this video, we will be discussing voluntary product accessibility templates, also known as VPATs, and how to use them to evaluate the accessibility of electronic information technology that you may be considering buying from vendors. Electronic information technology can be any kind of program that runs on a computer in which a user creates, displays, transfers, or stores electronic information. Examples would include publisher educational software from vendors such as Cengage, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Prentice Hall, or others. Features of learning management systems such as D2L, Blackboard, Moodle, or Canvas can also be considered electronic information technology as well as ebooks or OER materials and the like. First of all, by accessible, we mean that the electronic information technology is compatible with access or assistive technologies such as screen readers like JAWS or NVDA or screen modifiers like Zoom Text and Magic or voice activated software like Dragon or finally text to speech software like Read and Write or Natural Reader. And as a result, individuals who use these assistive technologies can use the electronic information technology successfully and with the same ease as those who do not use assistive technologies. In any case, the VPAD is a document that a vendor creates to provide information on how accessible a particular product is. There can be different VPADs to report compliance with different specific standards. These standards include the U.S. Federal Accessibility Standard, Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act, the European Union Standard, EN 301-549, or the Web Content Accessibility Guide, or WCAG 2.0 or 2.1. WCAG 2.1 compliance to the AA level is the most relevant for the college, but there is significant overlap in the standards, so any VPAT will provide valuable and relevant information. In any case, the VPAT is a document that a vendor creates to provide information on how accessible a particular product is. It is a voluntary self-disclosure by the vendor and usually is based on their own evaluations. You can simply ask for a VPAT when you are talking with the vendor about a product. Most VPATs have a summary table at the top that lists different types of electronic information technology for which a VPAT can be used. For example, software applications and operating systems, web-based internet information and applications, telecommunications products, etc. One or more of the items in this table may be applicable to a given piece of electronic information being reported on and will have summary information listed if applicable or noted simply as not applicable. Following the summary table are individual tables. Each of these tables are associated with individual types of electronic information technology type itemized in the summary table. And each of these tables should contain specific details of the results of the vendor's testing. Tables that are not applicable for a particular technology will be labeled as such or left blank. Each table has three columns. The first column listing the specific accessibility issue or criteria. The second column describes how the product does or does not support the criterion or access for this issue. And finally, a column for comments, remarks, and or explanations. Finally, just because a company has created a VPAT doesn't mean that its product is fully accessible but it is a good sign that they are concerned about this topic and may be able to work with you to remedy any deficits. And it makes us aware of deficits so we can proactively develop equally effective alternatives. It should also be noted that the VPAT can help you compare the accessibility of different products you are looking at, but ultimately the product should be tested using access technologies. You can arrange for such a test by contacting any campus ADR office. Thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in Access for All.